Hi, welcome to the first video on the uh, introductory series of the UCAMAX training videos. We're going to create a new job in this one. So we go to job new. Job new brings up the job definition where we can name the job. This could typically be like a part number, a tool number, a job number, however you like to define uh, those. In this case, since this is the first video, I'm going to call it 101. Uh, I'm not doing anything with the revision in this case. And as the customer name, I'm going to call it training. Um, like this, if I tab over, you will see that the path that it creates for me automatically puts it in UCAM jobs training 101. And when I say, okay, it will create that job for me, that folder for me, if it doesn't exist. So in the setup video, the 301 setups, part one, defining the default job paths, you will see how you can have this work for you as well and what the other options are. For now, I'm gonna click okay. That brings up my smart start, which is our tool to bring in data like Gerber, uh, Exelon, and DXF, for example, over into our system. So how do I get data in? We start by going to add files. I'm going to pick it up from my FTP side folder and I'm gonna start with my training1.zip. And you will see that I can actually just open up that zip from within the system. I do not need to unzip it first. I can bring in the zip file and say unzip here. It unzips it. And the first thing what the smart start will do, it will actually look at the extensions that have been set up. And in this case, it knows that .ex2, that that corresponds with Exelon2, and that .gbx corresponds with Gerber274x. We will see in a moment that that's not always the case, of course, and that we will run a tool that allows us to recognize and analyze the files. So I have these now over here. How do I get them into the system? Well, first of all, we need to select and tell the system what which ones we want. And so if I would want to have the, the drill file together with my my uh, all of my Gerbers, the easiest way to do that would be to just click on the first uh, file that I want to convert, hold my shift key down and click on the last one that I want to convert. And at that point, I would be able to say add to job. So that brings it into the, into the system. Now, if I let's say that I wanted to only do the uh, first Gerber and the third Gerber and the fifth Gerber and the seventh Gerber. Well, the way I did this selection over here is by holding down my control key. So the control key is used to make selections that are non-contiguous. Yeah. We can sort this uh, list that we see over here. Sometimes there's multiple files that are coming in and rather than alphabetic, which is what the default is, uh, it might be more uh, interesting to sort by the file type, which would do an alphabetic list of the file types. Of course, in this case, E become, is before G, so the list doesn't change. Uh, the same fashion here is if we would uh, sort on the extension, it would look at what the dot extensions are over here and sort the list alphabetically based on that. Alphabetically from A to Z or vice versa from Z to A, um, both of them are possible. So this was one where we recognize everything. So let's assume, let's take another example where that you can have. I'm going to, um, for now, just quickly go into my job editor here. And we will, of course, return to these functionalities later on. But I'm taking these files out. Um, I'm going to now say, um, take everything that is in my list, I'm going to remove it, simply remove it again. I select everything, including the zip file in this case, and I'm going to say delete clean. So it's out of the list. Now I'm going to do add files and I'm going to pick up a different uh, zip file. And what we're seeing over here is a number of things like before when we read this in, the, we automatically saw the D1 file as being an Exelon, L1 as being a Gerber. In this case, it's showing binary because it really doesn't, based on the extension, it doesn't know what it is. So what we're gonna do is a first step is, is have the system analyze for us 
by looking inside the, the files, what are these data sets? So again, I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to click the analyze button. The analyze will go and look inside the files. It looks for patterns like the headers. Uh, we know how an Excellent file is supposed to look like. We know how a Gerber file is supposed to look like. So we are identifying it this way. And from here on, it would be the same principle except for I'm going to do one more thing. You see that the files are called dot something, and that's actually the only identifier of the layers. If I would just convert one of them like this, you see that it would just call it cat. The next one would be called cat underscore one. That's not very helpful to identify the layers. So what we're going to do is when before I actually tell it to do add to job, I'm going to switch this on over here and I'm going to say keep the extension during input. So when we do that, add to job. Now you notice that there is a message coming up and that basically it indicates that for the Gerber file, it indicates that there are some parameters that are missing. So we will revisit that later on. But in this particular case, we will see that the Gerber file, uh, the excellent file has been converted just fine. Now you notice that by switching the keep extension on, it now on called them cat underscore L1, L2, etc. Okay, one more. With, we, again, we select all of them, we delete them. And I'm gonna take, this time I'm gonna just go into a folder and bring in the layers, these are not zipped. And I'm gonna open them up like that. Now you notice that uh, over here, it's a very it's a very long file name. So this job has a very long has a very something. So how do I know what's what? Well, I can actually switch from the looking at the beginning of the file to the end of the file. So this way, regardless that it's a very long file name, I can still see that I have got a cat on underscore D1 get on a score l1 etc etc and i could take them again and bring them into the system that concludes it for the smart start we would click on quit thank you